Hello, I'm David Fish. I'm here to talk about an entity that has received some attention uh, more recently, and it's called MINOCA, which is sort of a nifty acronym for myocardial infarction with non-obstructive coronary arteries. I have no relevant disclo disclosures for this. So MINOCA is a, sort of a complex subject, and we're going to address these issues. We're going to remind ourselves about oxygen transport in blood, coronary blood flow, what is actually the issue in coronary artery disease, what causes myocardial infarction, what is myocardial infarction by definition, and then what is MINOCA. Diagnosis and management of MINOCA, we're going to look at the outcomes and then uh, some interesting work combining optical coherence tomography of the coronary arteries with co cardiac MRI in Minoka. So first, let's look at oxygen transport in the blood. This is going to be relevant to our understanding of myocardial infarction. As you uh, may recall, there are, uh, in the hemoglobin molecule, there are four binding sites for oxygen. And uh, this results in a biochemical uh, result called cooperativity, wherein the binding of subsequent oxygens after the first alters the binding curve. And here is on the right, you'll see the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. At the uh, right, you'll see on the, at the red arrows uh, the content of oxygen in the blood as it's carried in the arterial blood, and then the content of oxygen in the venous blood. So on average, as sampled in the pulmonary artery, the uh, body in total uses about a quarter of the oxygen bound to hemoglobin. In other words, it takes one out of the four bound oxygens, uh, which uh, has the characteristic of uh, being um, bound and unbound at relatively low transition pressures. This is quite different from the heart in particular. The heart, on the other hand, uses as much as three quarters, that is three out of four of the bound oxygens. Um, and it can operate between about 50% and 25% saturation. And it turns out that 25% saturation occurs at a pressure um, that is not physiologically relevant. In other words, the myocardium can use 100% of the blood 100% of the time. So that means that oxygen delivery in the myocardium is constitutively regulated by coronary blood flow. The only way to get more oxygen is to increase the flow of blood and therefore the content of oxygen flowing by. I also want to remind us about the function of the coronary arteries. They are conduit arteries. And here you'll see sample uh, arteriograms showing the dark blush of contrast that proceeds from the coronary artery into the myocardial blood vessels. Um, what is coronary artery disease? First, it's a process that causes structural changes, and we treat these these, uh, this condition f by treatment for lipids and risk factors. There's inflammation of the artery wall, plaque formation, medial degeneration, stenosis, and ectasia that can develop. It's also a process that causes instability um, of the uh, thrombotic system. Um, and for this, we treat for, with uh, platelet suppressants. Um, these in unstable events can involve plaque rupture, plaque erosion, and secondary thrombosis that may be occlusive. What causes myocardial infarction? Well, I'm going to paraphrase Dr. Robert Cloner's work looking at the coronary artery of a canine. And after about a couple of minutes of occlusion, you'll see mitochondrial changes that correct promptly if the, if the occlusion is released. But between two to five minutes of occlusion, it, there are mitochondrial changes that take hours to days to correct. And after about five minutes, there are irreversible mitochondrial changes, and therefore, myocardial ne necrosis begins.
I point this out to say that the time sensitivity of the threshold for myocardial injury means that many of the processes that affect coronary blood flow and or myocardial oxygen demand, including non-cardiac processes, can result in myocardial infarction. What is myocardial infarction? Well, this is from the fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction published from the writing group in 2018. Um, this is a, an extremely uh, comprehensive and thoughtful document, and I would encourage everyone uh, who has the opportunity to read this. It points out the criteria for myocardial infarction. Clinical definition in, denotes the presence of acute myocardial injury detected by abnormal cardiac biomarkers in the setting of evidence of acute ischemia. The criteria for myocardial injury is detection of an elevated uh, cardiac troponin value above the 99th percentile of the upper uh, limit, and this is defined as myocardial injury. The injury is considered acute if there is a rise and fall of the cardiac troponin values. This produces a spectrum of myocardial injury, and here in this bullet diagram, um, you can see on the outer circle injury leading to infarction on the inner circle and the overlapping uh, uh, potential complicating factors including heart failure, anemia, hypoxemia, hypotension, and kidney disease. So what's new in this universal definition? Um, there have, um, large parts of this document um, are uh, reinforced from the previous um, third universal definition document. But uh, among the things that uh, is pointed out is the use of cardiova cardiovascular magnetic resonance imaging to define etiology, and we'll be seeing more of this. Updated concepts include the refinement of the type 1 and type 2 um, definitions. Uh, we won't address type 3, type 4, or 5 today. Type 1 is, my, is myocardial infarction uh, with the emphasis on the causal relationship of plaque disruption in the coronary atherothrombosis model. Type 2 uh, includes settings with oxygen demand and supply imbalance unrelated to acute coronary atherothrombosis. I have some um, general disagreements with the approach taken in these definitions, and I'll refer to these uh, shortly. Um, finally, uh, among new sections in the definition, there is uh, Takotsubo syndrome, uh, Minoka, our subject today, the role of chronic kidney disease, atrial fibrillation, um, and silent or unrecognized myocardial infarction. Um, the criteria ultimately uh, involves the demonstration of myocardial injury uh, as measured by the troponin values. Uh, clinical symptoms of myocardial ischemia, electrocardiographic changes, uh, in, including the possible development of pathological Q waves, and other imaging evidence of the loss of viable myocardium, or the identification of uh, coronary thrombus by arteriography. Um, myocardial injury uh, related to acute myocardial ischemia because of oxygen supplied demand imbalance may involve spasm, embolism, dissection, um, bradyarrhythmia, hypotension or shock, respiratory failure, or severe anemia. So summing up the clinical classification of myocardial infarction, type 1 is mainly about the atherothrombotic coronary artery disease form of infarction. This is usually precipitated by atherosclerotic plaque disruption. Um, the burden of atherosclerosis and thrombosis in the culprit lesion may vary greatly. The dynamic thrombotic component may lead to distal coronary embolization, also resulting in myocyte necrosis. And plaque rupture may not only be complicated by intraluminal thrombosis, but also by hemorrhage into the plaque through the disrupted surface. And here, uh, summarized on the left, are the criteria. Um, and I've provided these notations to remind us that plaque hemorrhage may develop and that the dynamic thrombotic component may lead to distal coronary embolization. Type 2 myocardial infarction um, highlights the mismatch between oxygen supply and demand. By definition, atherosclerotic plaque disruption is not a feature of type 2 MI. However, this is my note, such acute structural change to the coronary artery that reduces coronary blood flow may be occult. <laughs> 
and may have resolved, and it may have occurred by other mechanisms such as spontaneous dissection, and would still be, while it shares a pathophysiologic consequence of type 1 MI, is here classified as type 2 MI. Type 2 has a higher frequency in women. The short and long-term mortality rates for patients with type 2 are generally higher than for type 1 due to an increased prevalence of comorbid conditions. Coronary disease is still a common finding in type 2 patients. Uh, in general, these patients have a worse prognosis than those without coronary disease. Coronary embolism caused by thrombi, calcium, or vegetation from the atria or ventricles, or acute aortic dissection may result in a type 2 MI. And spontaneous coronary artery dissection with or without intramural hematoma is another non-atherosclerotic condition that may occur, especially in young women, but um, it does have an, um, the same consequence as, uh, another for, as uh, atherothrombotic occlusion of the coronary. So in that sense, uh, it maps um, pathophysiologically to uh, uh, very similar to uh, type 1 MI. So I find these definitions a little uh, inconsistent. Type 2 is defined not to include atherosclerotic plaque, plaque disruption, but such disruption that it results in transient or occult occlusion may be included. Other structural, uh, uh, other acute uh, obstructions such as embolized thrombus, spontaneous coronary dissection, so-called SCAD, are also classified with type 2 MI, but they are isomorphic to myocardial infarction due to coronary disease in effect. The prognosis derives separately from myocardial injury and persistent risk posed by coronary artery disease. Combining myocardial infarction due to some forms of acute structural change of the coronary artery that reduce coronary blood flow with coronary blood flow demand-based causes of ischemia and injury, I feel complicates this definition and also, as you will see, the definition of Minoka. Here is the uh, recapitulated on the left, the criteria for type 2 MI, but here also depicted on the right is an example of non-atherosclerotic coronary artery dissection, but this is still an acute structural change to the coronary artery that obstructs blood flow. Minoka um, has a number of features. I will say at the outset that Minoka is a clinical diagnosis, and therefore it does not ultimately necessarily um, have a consistent set of pathophysiologic definitions. Myocardial infarction patients with no angiographic obstructive coronary disease is one of the criteria. As in myocardial infarction, it indicates there's an ischemic mechanism responsible for the injury. The diagnosis of Minoka necessitates that obstructive coronary disease has not been inadvertently overlooked, such as spontaneous coronary artery dissection. Atherosclerotic plaque disruption and coronary thrombosis may be a cause of Minoka, uh, that is type 1 MI. However, coronary spasm and spontaneous coronary dissection may also be involved that is a type 2 MI, along with other possible causes. The prevalence of Minoka is estimated to be 6 to 8 percent among patients diagnosed with myocardial infarction, more common in women than men, more common in patients presenting with n STEMI compared to those present, presenting with ST elevation myocardial infarction. Additional coronary imaging and functional testing methods may be useful to elucidate the multiple mechanisms of ischemia in Minoka. A Minoka event may include a type 1 or type 2 MI. It's mechanistically diverse, and that causes the characterization of etiology, treatment, and prognosis to be difficult, and perhaps renders the entity itself pathophysiologically incoherent. This paper is uh, from a consensus statement from the AHA concerning the entity of Minoka. I also would en encourage people to read this. Um, it uh, is a very good position paper. In this um, document, Minoka is addressed by definition. It's the myocardial infarction in the absence of obstructive coronary disease. It was first documented as long as 75 years ago in autopsy reports 
detailed myocardial necrosis in the absence of a significant coronary atherosclerosis. The prevalence of non-obstructive coronary disease in 5 to 6 to percent, up to 15 percent depending on the population of patients with acute myocardial infarction, um, may be in the Minoka population. So the current focus is to address the mis misperception by some clinicians who still suppose that the absence of obstructive coronary disease excludes the possibility of an acute myocardial infarction. Acute myocardial infarction from the fourth universal definition, again, detection of a rise or fall of troponin, um, a corroborative clinical evidence of infarction, non-obstructive coronary artery disease, on coronary arteries on angiography, and no specific alternate diagnosis for the clinical presentation. These are the criteria for Minoka. There are some epidemiologic observations of interest. Uh, Minoka patients are usually younger than those with uh, coronary disease. Women make up close to 50 percent of the Minoka population, but only about 25 percent of the population with uh, acute infarction due to coronary disease. Women with acute myocardial infarction are twice as likely as men to have Minoka. Minoka is also more likely to occur in patients of black, Maori, or Pacific race and Hispanic ethnicity. Traditional risk factors such as hypertension, diabetes, tobacco abuse, and a family history of myocardial infarction may be less frequent in Minoka patients. So there are some key issues in defining Minoka. Patients with Minoka generally have better prognosis than patients with coronary disease and acute infarction. Multiple atherosclerotic and non-atherosclerotic causes with heterogeneous pathophysiologic mechanisms can cause Minoka. Unlike coronary disease causing acute myocardial infarction, there's a paucity of dedicated studies examining it and therefore a lack of evidence-based therapies. Minoka should be reserved, this term should be reserved, for patients in whom there is an ischemic basis for their clinical pre presentation. The MI in Minoka does, after all, stand for myocardial infarction. There are also key exclusions. Despite the absence of uh, obstructive coronary disease, it's imperative to exclude clinically overt causes for the elevated troponin, such as sepsis or pulmonary embolism, clinically overlooked obstructive disease, such as complete occlusion of a small artery, um, clinically subtle non-ischemic mechanisms of myocyte injury that can mimic myocardial infarction, such as myocarditis, and if um, coronary arteriography is performed and FFR, fractional flow reserve, is interrogated, um, a significant flow-limiting stenosis by the definition of uh, 0 0.80 cannot exist. This is a general flow diagram re-emphasizing the clinical diagnosis and the diagnosis of exclusion uh, that is posed by Minoka. Following the flow chart on the left down to the exclusion of uh, a coronary disease and other forms of myocardial injury, at the bottom the flow uh, diagram uh, terminates in the diagnosis of Minoka, which is a clinical characterization. Subsequent investigation of the Minoka cases may lead to specific diagnoses in the lower right corner, including plaque disruption uh, due to a spontaneous coronary dissection, an entity that was in the excluded uh, forms of diagnosis higher up in the flow diagram. This emphasizes that the uh, specific pathophysiologic findings that are ultimately associated to the diagnosis of Minoka um, do not form a coherent uh, definition of Minoka. Rather, Minoka is a diagnosis of exclusion. It's a working diagnosis um, that um, has to be uh, assigned when the um, earlier forms or causes of myocardial infarction are excluded. So, um, in any case, the patient does need to have the un underlying cause responsible for Minoka identified and treated. Um, it is myocardial infarction and cardioprotective therapies must be patient specific. Um, Antiplatelet therapy is indicated if it's a type 1 myocardial infarction. It's uncertain, of uncertain value for a type 2 myocardial infarction. <laughs>
The prognosis depends on underlying cause. Most studies have shown that Minoka patients have a better outcome than those with coronary disease. Approximately 25% of patients with Minoka will experience angina in the subsequent 12 months. This is similar to the frequency reported in patients with coronary disease and infarction. Some meta-analysis studies show um, a hospital mortality rate of about 0.9% and a 12-month mortality of about 4.7%. Uh, one registry in New Zealand uh, indicated that death or, or uh, recurrent MI occurred in 4.6% over two years, compared with only 2.2% of age and sex match subjects without coronary disease or diabetes. So there are some uh, additional uh, prognostic, prognosis risk for the diagnosis of Minoka. Um, the largest uh, study was, that is outlined in this paper is the Swedeheart Registry and included more than 9,000 patients with a diagnosis of Minoka and a mean follow-up of 4.1 years. Uh, they took the opportunity to evaluate, evaluate the outcomes uh, relating to the use of statins, ACE inhibitors, and ARBs, beta blockers, and dual antiplatelet therapy uh, using the composite of all-cause mortality or hospitalization for reinfarction, heart failure, or stroke. Um, they did find that there was a significantly lower event rate associated to the use of statins with a 23% relatively relative risk reduction, 18% uh, risk reduction uh, with ACE inhibitors and ARBs, a trend for a possible lower event rate with the use of beta blockers, and um, however, dual antiplatelet agents was not associated with the lower event rate. Um, in follow-up, there was a 13, for, over 4.1 years, there was a 13.4% mortality, which is less than half of the, uh, uh, the half of the mortality was classified as cardiovascular mortality. 7.1% rec had recurrent myocardial infarction, 4% stroke, 6% hospitalization for heart failure, 3.6% hospitalization for bleeding, and 1.7% one-year mortality in young patients. So the predictors of in-hospital mortality in Minoka are similar to those in AMI-CAD, uh, that is age, higher troponin level, renal dysfunction, heart rate, blood pressure, and peripheral arterial disease. ST segment elevation on the electrocardiogram and presentation with heart failure or shock were more strongly predictive of in-hospital death among patients with Minoka than among those with uh, acute infarction due to coronary disease. Here are the um, plots uh, showing the, um, the advantage in the composite endpoint for statins on the upper left, for RAS inhibitors on the right, for beta blockers on the lower left, and uh, the lack of uh, discernible benefit for dual antiplatelet therapy. Uh, this is a very important paper that examined uh, in this registry the reinfarction events in patients who had original diagnosis of Minoka. There were uh, 570 uh, patients in the Sweetheart Registry, about 6.3%, uh, who had a new MI in follow-up. They tended to be older with more diabetes and hypertension and previous MI and a higher creatinine. On angiography, however, uh, interestingly, a high proportion of the patients had recurring Minoka, about half of them. The survival plots are a little discouraging. This is survival to 120 months, so this is um, a very useful and well, uh, well done cohort. Um, but on the left here, you can see that if the patient is treated conservatively, and specifically, if they are not investigated by coronary arteriography, their prognosis is sub substantially worse. On the right panel, um, you can see that uh, late survival, if the patient has recurrent Minoka, and that was 50% of the, of the patients, their prognosis is also worse than if they had a second myocardial infarction on the basis of coronary artery disease. Management, therefore, that's suggested 
is that primary management of Minoka should include the treatment of coronary risk factors. Coronary arteriography must be strongly considered in patients who are readmitted with myocardial infarction after Minoka. Those who do not receive coronary arteriography have a worse prognosis. And finally, recurrent Minoka has a worse prognosis than recurrent MI due to coronary disease. The prognosis in terms of all-cause death in patients with previous Minoka readmitted is poor. The adverse prognosis is most pronounced in patients selected for a conservative th strategy. Uh, prognosis after the new MI did not differ between patients with MI and obstructive CAD and a new Minoka. There are currently no randomized trials aiming at improving the prognosis for patients with a Minoka. Um, so these are really needed. At present, intense treatment for traditional risk factors seems like a reasonable approach because the predictors for adverse outcome are most similar after Minoka as for MI with obstructive coronary disease. There is some observational study in the Sweetheart Registry that suggests beneficial effects of statins and renin-angiotensin system receptor blockers. More recently, um, to investigate the various pathophysiologic causes of Minoka, OCT, uh, that is um, uh, optical coherence tomography of the coronary arteries, and cardiac MRI uh, have been employed to uh, help us understand the entity further. Um, this is hard to read this flow diagram, but essentially out of about 5,000 patients, um, there were, uh, who had um, acute myocardial infarction. A number of patients, about 260, were identified who had Minoka. And then in the flow diagram, ultimately, in this particular study, about 40 out of about 80 eligible patients were ultimately studied. They included patients like this one, a 41-year-old woman who had apicolateral non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. The patient had proximal coronary arteries that were patent, a somewhat small distal LAD, and anteroapical wall motion abnormality. Uh, optical coherence tomography of the coronary showed an animal tear of the LAD and mural hematoma. A cardiac MRI confirmed wall motion abnormality, but no late gadolinium enhancement. Uh, the authors state that in this study, optical coherence tomography coupled with the MRI, it provided a clear substrate and or diagnosis in all patients presenting with Minoka, including electrocardiographic features of ischemia associated with corresponding wall motion abnormalities. Um, the specific question of the mechanisms that may be unique to women was uh, undertaken in a collaborative study and reported by Harmony Reynolds in Circulation. Um, this uh, subsequent, uh, these subsequent slides are taken from Dr. Reynolds' presentation to the AHA in 2020, for the HARP investigators. Again, to remind us, Minoka was defined in this study as MI meeting the universal definition, 50%, less than 50% stenosis in major epicardial arteries on angiography normal appearance or mild to moderate atherosclerosis, no specific alternate diagnosis. Um, it occurs in 6 to 15% of MI, disproportionately affecting women. There is a four-year rate of, of late uh, adverse event of 24%, and five-year mortality of about 11%. Pathogenesis is varied, leading to uncertainty about treatment. And in this um, particular research program, um, patients were referred uh, with the intent to perform uh, cath uh, or PCI as indicated. Um, they underwent uh, OCT if eligible and cardiac MRI if available. Of 301 women uh, in 16 sites, 170 were found to have Minoka. Um, about, of all these, 170 45 underwent OCT and 116 had cardiac MRI. And uh, a number of features are worth noting here. Uh, ST elevation myocardial infarction was in a small minority, 3.5%. Uh, uh, segmental wall motion abnormality was identified on echocardiogram in about 44%. Coronary arteriography was reported as normal by the investigation site in 54%. 
OCT findings identified a culprit lesion in 46%, including plaque rupture, thrombosis without plaque rupture, um, layered plaque and intimal bump, uh, including spasm, for example, and uh, one case of spontaneous coronary dissection. MRI findings included infarction, specific findings of infarction in 33%, regional injury in 21%, non-ischemic ca causes were found in 21%, and interestingly, myocarditis was identified in 15%. Uh, in some other papers, um, this was even higher. Overall, uh, the MRI was normal in about a quarter of the patients. Integrating these two, um, a cause was identified in 85% of patients, no cause in 15%. Um, there was an OCT culprit uh, with cardiac MRI, evidence of infarction or regional ischemia in 69%. Um, so putting it together, of course, multimodality imaging with both OCT and cardiac MRI in these women with Minoka identified a cause in 85%. This is a sample case that was provided in the paper um, showing a 44-year-old woman without cardiac risk factors who had chest pain and heavy menstrual bleeding with a hemoglobin of 7, had a peak troponin of 3.25 nanograms per milliliter, and uh, OCT identified LED plaque rupture with a thin cap fiber atheroma. And there was a small transmural infarction at the end of the LED identified on cardiac MRI. So there are limitations to the study with a small sample size. Uh, there was no control group, uh, no spasm testing, and of not all subjects had three vessel OCT and MRI, only about half. It was limited to women. However, it provides useful diagnostic information. Um, cardiac MRI findings correlated well with OCT culprit lesions, demonstrating that non-obstructive culprit lesions frequently cause minoca. Coronary artery spasm or thromboembolism is likely caused by MI or regional ischemic injury in cases without OCT culprit. Mechanisms of minoca in women were often similar to mechanisms of uh, myocardial infarction and coronary disease, atherothrombosis with possible contribution of coronary spasm. And this goes to what I mentioned earlier that uh, um, on investigation of Minoka, which is arrived at by exclusion, that uh, case, uh, causes can be identified that are uh, specific, specifically excluded in, uh, in uh, uh, investigation of the patient prior to the conclusion of Minoka. There is a study that is intended to provide us a randomized prospective controlled view of therapy for Minoka uh, using beta blockers and ACE inhibitors in a two by two factorial trial. Um, they uh, intend to randomize uh, quite a few patients, um, about 3,500. Um, and um, last report, my understanding, the progress has been slow, but this will be important work for our uh, conclusions. So some notes, final notes. Um, Minoka is a diagnosis of exclusion. The more you exclude, the less diverse the mechanisms are included in Minoka. Minoka reminds us that in the presence of criteria for acute MI, the absence of high-grade obstructive coronary disease does not exclude MI. Minoka cohorts include a disproportionately high number of women, 50% as compared to MI with coronary disease at 25%. The approach to treating Minoka should include suppression of risk factors, including treatment of statins and um, RAS inhibitors. Beta blockers and dual antiplatelet therapy are as yet of unproven benef benefit. However, uh, this, uh, these conclusions are drawn from retrospective study. We do not yet have prospective data to confirm these. OCT and MRI are together very sensitive and specific for the diagnosis of the mechanisms of Minoka. Recurrent MI after Minoka, and especially recurrent Minoka, has a poor prognosis. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, I appreciate it. This is a difficult subject, and uh, I think that uh, we will learn more about this in the future.